Today we're gonna to look at some of the pros and cons of the Delta Pro and also the smart generator, as these are great for home backup power and they're even a great setup for RV use. Now I'm gonna be showing you more of an RV setup. I'll show you the setup that I have in my RV as far as the solar that powers it. I'll show you what it can actually power and about how long it can power and some of the limitations. Now, if you're not familiar with the Delta Pro or the Smart Generator, we'll take a quick overview of both of these units, and then I'll show you the solar setup that I have on my RV and how it provides power to the Delta Pro, and then I'll show you how the Delta Pro and Smart Generator provide power to the RV unit. Ever since the release of the EcoFlow Delta Pro, this has been part of an expanding ecosystem from EcoFlow, with the ability to be able to expand the batteries from 3.6 to 25 kilowatt hours, this allows for a real home backup use. With the EcoFlow Smart Panel, you can hook up several home circuits to be able to provide power to your home when utility power becomes unstable and fails. This will start to draw power from the Delta Pro units to be able to still provide power to your home up to 7200 watts. And you can control and manage EcoFlow's power within the EcoFlow app. And with a double voltage hub, you can double your power and also provide true 240 volt output power. When solar power is unavailable, this is when the smart generator come into play. These are automatic and start and stop when needed and can provide 5.4 kilowatts of energy per tank of fuel. The Delta Pro can also be charged with AC, which this still is one of the fastest in the business with Xtreme technology being able to charge it in 2.7 hours. And this is the only all-in-one medium power station that can be truly charged with an EV power station. This is also the only unit that can be charged with 1600 watts of solar and up to 150 volts of DC input. It also provides 30 amps of 12 volt power along with a 12 volt socket and you can even add a remote if you wanted to put this in the basement and add the remote up top. There is a couple drawbacks to the smart generator as it is a little bigger and heavier than comparable units, but it's the only one that's fully automated and it is also dual fuel with 87 octane, can also run on propane, and can start and stop at will by utilizing the app and more. This can provide 1800 watts of output as a standalone generator, but where it really shines is by using the DC cable and then plugging this directly into EcoFlow products like the Delta Pro. You can manually start and stop the smart generator or within the app, fully automated to start and stop whenever you need it to. When it comes to the solar setup on my RV, I installed 2000 watts of flexible solar panels from Renogy. These are a newer design from their very popular 175 watt panels, which now include half cut cells. These are also very light, really easy to install, which most people can do, and only took me a few hours to get them all installed and wired up. And I have my solar panels wired in series parallel, which I have five solar panels in the back wired in series and the other front section wired in series as well with another five panels and then they both parallel in. Okay, so I'll show you how I have my setup um, piece by piece just so you can kind of see if you want to do this or if you're looking to do something similar. Um, so, so far what we have is Delta Pro, which is going to be going into my generator inlet box, which is up there. This was a generator prep. There was a 5500 Onan propane generator in this box. I put a plate down so I could uh, add more storage. There was, on this side over here, a uh, kind of like a separator, and I added a couple of SOK 206 batteries. Those that's like 5200 watt hours just right there with those two batteries i'll leave a link down below if you guys are interested in looking at that but so my house batteries if i get low on this for some reason i can actually take power from these and dump it over or if i wanted to take power from that i can actually dump it over into that as well by using the converter inside which you should always have off when using delta pro or i mean uh, any other type of power stations as well because you'll end up just kind of making a loop and it's it's a lot of transitions going on you're going from dc to ac conversion to a dc conversion again to get into here so it should just be powered up by solar is how you want to have those set up that way you never have to worry about them really and then you can dump the extra into your power stations if needed and so I have a 30 amp going in to my generator inlet box cord. So that cord is extra long. That way I can hook this up to a large generator if I want. And I know I'm going to be somewhere where this can't keep up. I can just double up on like a 240 volt generator, run both my ACs all day and all that stuff. So um, if you have this, it makes it easier because then that right there will go up over to a transfer switch behind this wall and the other wall 
um, which you'll need depending on how you set it up. There is a lot of different ways. That right there is just an exhaust vent fan. Um, if you've seen or been around the marine industry, that's what that is. It's to basically move cool air from the bottom. It brings it up into the Delta Pro and then as the hot air goes up out there, out the fan, and then it uh, actually comes out just down below over here um, to at least move some air because this can get hot. Uh, there are times where I've seen the battery at about 120 degrees almost um, at its hottest, but I mean, it is very hot outside. So you have to remember that those are part of your limitations is that these can overheat and then they will shut down. So depending on where you camp will determine some of the limitations to this, the extra batteries and more. Now, when it comes to my solar input, I ended up making my own XT60i connector to run into a larger cable. These cables just kind of loop up and around here. That's my solar input, which then goes over to a DC disconnect right there. So that way, if I'm serving seeing something or, you know, if I, that is a breaker. So that way, if, if something's happening, it is fused up on top. It's double fused for each array that is up there. I have two arrays and they parallel in. So that's just so I have uh, something to disconnect it, obviously. And this isn't really finished and how I want to do it, but because I'm always changing my setups and, and experimenting and trying other things and putting them on my channel here, and it's the reason these are just kind of hanging here, but they, they do the job. And then we have this and this. This will show for the extra battery, which I'll show you what I'm doing here. Okay, so now what you see up here is a Delta II Max extra battery. That's 2,000 watt hours of extra power. So we have 36, now two. So this gives us 56. Not that you get everything, but I have a, probably a good 5,000 watt hours depending how I use it of uh, power. And they will say that this is not compatible, but I don't really like to follow rules. So I kind of will experiment and kind of just do whatever I want. And this actually works really well with a Delta Pro and it's a lot smaller. It's lighter than having a Delta Pro extra battery. So if you are a little bit short on room, this has been working really well for me because what happens is that as this charges and fills up, then as you would think it would, it charges the next battery and fills up. It'll use the Delta II Max extra battery first, then come down and use the Delta Pro next. So far, this is actually providing enough for what I do on the occasional. If I need more power, well, then of course that's when the smart generator comes in. Now, is this the end to all problems? Not really, because depending again, where you camp, how you camp, it's gonna determine how much power you're gonna use. This, for the most part, will take care of the average person. If you're out camping where it's hot all the time, or if you're constantly in the trees, the, no matter how much solar you have, it's not gonna be enough to fully charge this up if you're running your AC or if you have the refrigerator going constantly on AC. So you will drain down and again, have to go back to a generator, whether it's this one, or if you wanna use a Honda or something else, you can plug it in. But what happens is it goes into a bypass mode, which basically you can only utilize 1800 watts of the Delta Pro while it's being charged from AC versus when it's being charged from DC from this, you can use the full power of the Delta Pro because this charges off of DC, just like solar. So if I have 2000 watts of solar coming in, I can still use this as well to double dump into the Delta Pro and use this fully to its capacity. So if I wanted to use 3600 watts of power, I could. And, um, you know, then you're not limited by the AC input on this when it's in bypass. So. Okay, just to give you an idea of my setup, so I have it running off of propane right now, and that's my propane line, which I thought about making this longer, but the DC cable is only so long, but you can see it kind of tucks there behind my batteries, up to my valve, then it goes to the onboard regulators to my onboard tanks, and so I can just kind of have this running here, and I could move my truck a little bit more, but I don't want to create a trip hazard, but with it in the back of my truck, it helps dampen the sound for my neighbors over there, if there are any, which nobody around yet, but I try to be conscious about the noise I make in my own campground, try to be a good steward and not that guy, but just to kind of show you, with it in the back of the truck, it really does dampen the sound, so if I go over here, kind of show you what it sounds like, the stream also helps drown that out, but so you can see, it's not terribly loud and I did forget my sound meter, so I was gonna show you. 
Okay, so let's say that you're my neighbor and you're across from me, but you can listen. Not too bad. And so now you see my truck and trailer way down there. Hardly anything, right? I can barely hear it. But yeah, just a little bit. So one of the cons about the smart generator is that even on eco mode, it never goes down into the lower RPMs because a thousand watts is as low as it can charge when hooked up to the Delta Pro. So it's always gonna be in an upper RPM range and it won't idle down really. But even when I fully charge it up to 1800 watts, which I really only get 1650 out of it, no matter if it's on gas or propane, um, that's about as loud as it gets. But one cool thing is that even up here at 4,800 feet, I was running this on gasoline for about 40 minutes roughly, and I didn't have to worry about the jetting because it actually did pretty good. But one nice benefit about running on propane is that no jetting is actually required because you don't have to jet it. It bypasses those carb circuits, so that's a benefit. And one of the reasons why I tell people to buy a dual fuel generator. So now when it comes to solar and the amount of input you get, obviously is gonna be determined by where you camp again and how you camp. As you can see, I'm pretty much covered with trees and in the shade and my solar input range from 50 watts to maybe 175 peak, depending on basically how much sun I was able to get on these panels, but now when I travel to my destinations, I can easily hit 1600 watts peak for the Delta Pro. And I also switch my refrigerator now to electric when I drive. This can save me a decent amount of propane even while I'm camping to help keep my favorite s'mores treat nice and cold. And I also leave it on auto that way I can switch between gas and electric as needed. But the Delta Pro can easily power up my Mr. Coffee, just a little over 900 watts. And at the same time, I can even power up this 1400 watt kettle and not miss a beat. But a lot of people are interested about an AC unit. Now the Delta Pro can easily handle my 1500 watt AC unit and 13.5 at the same time. Now I won't have my refrigerator on AC or the converter on as I will be drawing a lot of power and this would easily consume the storage capacity very quick. But a 15K AC unit can use up to 1750 watts depending on model and how hot it is outside. If you look at the meter, I'm already drawing over 1700 watts just with my 15K AC unit and it's about 95 or more degrees outside during this little section of this video. But say you want to run a smaller AC unit like a 13.5 or a 10K. This is a 13.5K AC unit and I should mention both have micro air easy starts on them to take the strain off of the Delta Pro, but look at the usage difference. This only burns about 950 to maybe 1050 watts. So if I have enough solar coming in, I can pretty much run this all day and several hours into the evening. And if you had a 10K, you could run even more. Now again, one of the cons is gonna be the price of this because it is a little bit more expensive per kilowatt hour if you were to go with maybe a couple other systems that are out there. The Victron is really good stuff, but it is not very DIY friendly for some people. This is literally plug and play. You throw it in here, you plug it in, and you're pretty much done. You hook up some solar to it, uh, whether it's on your RV or if it's a ground mount, and you're kind of good to go. You hook up the generator, it plugs right in. It'll do all the work for you. It turns on, it turns off when it needs to, that's kind of why you're paying a little bit more because it's full automation. It's pretty much a plug and play. So if you want more of a DIY kit, then you would look into some of the other systems that are out there, maybe EG4, Victron and more. Um, but that's just one of the cons that I found is that the price is a little higher and obviously the weight, if you have to take it in and out of your RV, then uh, lifting hundred pounds isn't exactly fun. Now, in the end, you're only limited by the amount of power that you use. If you're pretty wasteful and just turning lights on, using the microwave all the time, turning on your AC for no reason, well, then it's not going to last very long. And that's the problem is that people are like, oh, I have batteries, I have solar, I have battery backup and all this stuff. You are still going to burn through it. And that's what people don't get is that even with 2000 watts of solar and five kilowatts, that's not, that's a small system it's not a lot of power when you want to start running like an AC unit all day that's going to draw a consistent thousand watts or more every hour. So it just depends on how you use it, where you camp, how you camp will determine how much you'll be able to stay gone off the grid 
and uh, you know you have to just be a good steward of your power uh, anyway i hope you guys like the video let me know what you think in the comments down below see you next time